When is a good time to recognize the try in your horse and quit picking on him from one session to the next? Stick around. I'll point out some obvious signs on Shooter and my not-so-always-perfect timing. Welcome back to Becky Emil Horse Training and ride number eight on Bonnie Six Shooter. Now, in this ride, I came back to the round pen after going to the arena the last time, and I decided to work on a little bit more technique, and it had been a few days since his last ride. I do work on quite a few other horses, and when I have to use the Pivo by myself to record, I have to make sure that there is no wind and the weather is perfect and just right, because otherwise, it just isn't going to record us. Now, as you can see, he's just being a little bit uncooperative, and I'm trying to have a little bit of patience. I spaked him there on the butt just a little bit to bring him forward, and he overreacted just a tiny bit. You know, with this horse, you know, you don't go from 1 to 10. You go, you know, ease into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as you add pressure to him. And so with that little bit of reaction... I would encourage you to take a little bit more time getting on and going through all the steps and making sure that they're perfectly okay um, before you just ride right off. See, he wanted to take a little bit too fast of a step there. As I bent him around, he should have just stood completely still when I took his head there. And so I kind of already know that he's a little bit more uptight and I probably should have given him a little bit more time to decompress after spanking him on the butt like I did and I probably should have practiced getting up on and off of him to allow some more time in between when I spanked him on the butt to move forward and when he reacted. So these are just a few red flags you should I would encourage you guys to watch out for as you're starting and riding your own horses at home. So I had somebody ask me in a previous video why he was swishing his tail so much. Now, do you see the funny step that's kind of going along here? He's trying to kick up at his belly because the flies are bothering him so bad. And it really doesn't matter what fly repellent you use in South Dakota. It only lasts for about 10 minutes. So you have roughly enough time to get them saddled and get them going before you have to give them another coat of fly spray again. And it's really, really tough. I, I've told people on several occasions that had I known the bugs in South Dakota were so bad, I probably would have never moved here. And as they say that the parts of the country that get the coldest will also have the worst bug problems. So, you know, I can only do my best to try to keep uh, the fly spray on him, but that's what all this tail swishing is. It's just fighting flies, so I wanted to... Uh, let you guys know that he's not being naughty or uncomfortable because of something I'm doing. It's, it's because of the, the bugs. So I start out the same way I always do, which is to work on the emergency stop. And if there's anything that I can stress of the greatest importance with these horses, when we first get on them, no matter how much time it's been in between, we want to remain consistent with all of our cues and all of our routines that we have with them. I don't ever want to throw something brand new at this horse without having first gone through the routine of all the things that he already knows. And with a horse like this, with as much ambition that he has and forward motor that he has, this emergency stop, this down regulating is going to always be a fabulous tool in my back pocket to use to help bring him down when he gets really uncomfortable and challenged in a lot of situations. It, it's going to be the thing that saves me when he does have huge reactions, whether it be out on the trail or in the show pen or when we haul to another center. So we see that I start turning this emergency stop into a roll away on the fence. Now, anytime they start to anticipate, whether it's the direction, the speed, any sort of change, we just change direction on them. And so when he's anticipating rolling to the inside and coming completely down to a stop and he's sulking up and not wanting to go, 
I'm going to roll them the other way and I'm going to ask them for a new lead going the other direction. I'm still going to go up his neck like it's an emergency stop, but I'm not going to complete it like I would if I were truly during the emergency stop. I'm going to set him up to roll and set myself in the proper position. And if you guys would like a video on that, I have several videos on my page on how to execute a proper roll away when you first start to teach him. Or if you want me to just break them down on this horse, which I might do anyway for the sake of this video, um, in another video, I'll go ahead and do that. And, and we can really, you know, slow mow it down and take a good look at everything that's going on. And so we see a horse that really wants to walk out on a long loose rein now after doing what, like five or six of those? That's one way to down regulate them, change direction rapidly, make them move their feet. Look at all the things that he just learned in less than, you know, two, two and a half minutes. You know, he's, he's stopping, he's rolling back, changing directions, he's picking up a new lead, he's getting his feet correct, he's following his nose, and now when I drop those reins and I let him quit, he plays game over, he gets quiet. And that's what's going to be really important down the road when it goes to competing on him and prepping him to compete at a higher level. We need a horse that gets quiet because if he blows all of his energy on being anxious and nervous and on the muscle, we're not going to have a horse to go out and perform on when the time actually comes. So we want to be able to go on this long, loose rein, relax, allow him to take a deep breath, allow him to drop that head and neck and get some really good endorphins going in, in his brain there and get him really quiet and comfortable and confident about the situation that we're putting him in here. After I've allowed him to catch his breath, I'm going to go ahead and start up again, and this time I'm going to start working on making smaller circles. Now, you know, I, I've heard a lot of different viewpoints on circles. You know, there's a lot of cowboys out there that don't give a crap whether their horse can do a circle or not. Um, here's the thing, that people that this matters to, you're going to want to pay attention. Now... A basic circle. Use your round pen to teach a basic circle. They're going to use that round pen rail as a crutch when you go around and just start real basic with trotting circles half the size of your round pen and gradually bring them down smaller and smaller. Now that's going to teach the horse a ton of balance, just really basic balance techniques to hold themselves together when they're packing a rider. Now, whether you want to go out in a straight line and check fence, or you want to chase a cow, or you want to travel across the country in mountainous terrain, all of this is going to teach your colt balance, teach him how to follow his nose. I take my hand out wide and bend him around as I'm putting him in the circle, and then I put my hand right back to neutral again and teach and treat him and teach him like he's a broke horse already. Um, that whole concept of holding your hands out really, really wide and, you know, rounding your own back and, and, you know, kind of leaning over the horse and treating it like it's a baby, baby, you know, that kind of doesn't do anything for me. We need to ride these guys like they're already broke. And as soon as we get the direction we want, we drop our hand. And as long as we can go on a long, loose rein, this horse is learning how to carry himself around already. You see me open my hand up to guide him the direction that I want, and I bring my hand right back to center again on him to allow him to balance himself. And we use that rail as a crutch. It's okay, you guys. This is ride number eight. And whether you're on ride number eight or ride number 40 or you're, you've been riding your horse for five years and you're just starting to work on circles... This is how you teach circles and you can teach your horse to balance himself. And we're not using the arena. That's what's beautiful about the round pen is, is that if we lose some shoulder control and some body control, it's easy to go back to the rail, regroup, and start over again. Whereas in the arena, you know, we get a lot of drifting or like if we're out in the pasture doing this, we'll get a lot of drifting back and forth. And um, it's just, it's just, I'm not saying it's impossible to teach because I have taught a lot out in the pasture. It's just so much easier to do it in the round pen. And again, we drop our hands, long, loose rein, and let him walk. 
And, you know, this is also super easy to teach in the arena if that's all you have and you have a rail in the arena. You know, use a corner. Then you have two rails to work on and then one open area when you're working on making better circles with your horse and teaching them balance. So now I really want to work on improving the technique in those rollaways by really getting him to stop square on that hind end. So I'm going to emphasize more of the backup and the stop before I put him into that roll. And you guys can see here that it's really not as fluid as it is when he has momentum like we saw in the very beginning. And the reason for that is because he's not getting underneath himself at this slow speed. He's kind of flat. His hawks are kind of hanging out behind him. When they have a little bit of speed going, you know, they have that psoas muscle in their top line, in their, in their obliques that's, that's gathering them up and rocking them back onto that hind end when they're set up properly to make that roll. And so at a stop, it's actually much harder, I think, than it is to do it at a greater speed, even if it is a trot. Now, this horse historically does not have the best backup. We've seen that in all the videos so far. So I'm going to really overcompensate with the release when he does give me a backup, when he does drop his head and give to the bit pressure before we walk off again. It's okay to add a circle to these. It breaks up the monotony of whatever drill we're working on and you see me just take my hand out wide to start the circle and I come back to center. I don't hang my hand out there for very long. As soon as I get him going the direction I want him to go, I bring it back to neutral and this is going to get a horse that's more responsive to my cues. Again, I try to back him up a few steps before I go ahead and roll him on the fence. Ideally, we want to ask him for that roll as he's taking the step back when that inside hind is underneath him. And we're going to let him go as slow as he wants to go at this point um, as we're just introducing this to him. It will get better with more repetition. So again, I add a circle to this to break up the monotony, to eliminate any sort of uh, anticipation he's going to have with this technique and to try to kind of get out of his face just a little bit before I put him in the next stop and back up and I'll give him the cue to stop and as soon as you know he drops his head there I get half a step back and I release and you can see my release there I go ahead and ask again so every time I put my hands forward, I'm releasing the pressure on his face and giving to him. We have to recognize the try. And you'll see here when he kicks up that that is the flies there. You see that kick up to the belly? That's going to be the flies really bothering him. So I think he's been really tolerant up to this point and, you know, putting up with the flies and he doesn't handle being picked on too much, so I'm going to call the ride short here pretty quick. I get a few more of these stops and backups and rollaways, and he starts to get a little bit crabby. So it's really important for you guys to be really aware of your horse and his temperament and what he's going to tolerate. And uh, you can see where he starts to get a little crabby in some of these stops and he resists a little bit. And what we're trying to do is avoid getting to that point. OK, so that's one of the reasons why I'm showing you guys these videos and these rides is is what to do in the event your horse does get a little bit crabby. You know, you try to end on a good note. You try to find a place to release. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the best stop in the whole world. Just stay consistent, stay fair, stay firm, continue to just keep your cool and keep your patience with them. And coincidentally, on one of these last rolls that I worked on with him, the Pivo completely quit following me and it lost me altogether. So I missed the very last portion of the ride. Not that big of a deal. It was just a stop and a backup and I dismounted him when he did it really nice for me. So I worked on just a couple more of these a nice stop, a back up, make sure I release when he gives to me. But you see, he's just he's just kind of elevating his head. He's gapping his mouth to get away from pressure. He's kind of sick of my crap. So I'm going to go ahead and quit on that note. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for ride number nine, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.